This video is proudly recorded and produced on OpenBSD. This video is not about OpenBSD specifically, but it's about covering a very underrated free and open source project called Kivix. So what is Kivix? Kivix it makes highly compressed copies of entire websites that each fits into a single file which is called sim files. So these sim files are binary, should be opened with a specific software, and they are small enough that can be stored on a user phone or a computer or even be hosted on an internal, internal network, for example, on a Raspberry Pi to serve on your home network. So the purpose of it is that a user can access to that particular website offline and still benefit from the, let's say, the knowledge or the data that is available there. So this project makes multiple websites or projects available for the offline usage. The most famous one are Wikipedia, Project Gutenberg, Stack Exchange, TED Talks, etc. In this video, what we are going to do, first of all, we are going to have a look at the projects. Afterwards, we are going to discuss how to host Kivix on a Raspberry Pi in a Docker container and put it behind a reverse proxy to serve HTTPS SIM files because some of the SIM files cannot be opened on a normal HTTP. So they, sh they should be served through HTTPS, doesn't matter whether the certificate is valid or not. But the important part about the Kiwix project is that it makes the most useful part of the internet available for offline usage. Might not be the case for most of us, but definitely it could be useful for the people who have unstable internet access, or they are living off the grid, or people that living in a countries that access to the internet is limited and or censored. For example, North Korea, Cuba, Iran, China, etc. Let's have a look at the project. So if we go to the project here, to the home page, let's quickly go there. It's called Internet Offline. And under the download section, we have three things. One is the Kiwix Reader. These are the standalone Kiwix Reader that are able to serve SIM files on your local device. So you can download a SIM file, the highly compressed dump of a website or a portion of it, and then view it in your Android, in your Windows machine, iOS, GNU Linux browser, and or serve it as a HTTP server with the Raspberry Pi. So for a Linux, we have this one desktop is with C++ and JavaScript. I didn't find any OpenBSD port, unsurprisingly, but I think the effort might not be too high to port this one to the OpenBSD. In my case, I have no practical use for the standalone client as I am hosting my Kiwix uh, on my Raspberry Pi and I can actually access to all the repositories that I need through my browser. So let me quickly show you. This is my local instance. As you can see, 192.168.046 and it's serving on HTTPS. So these are the things that I have here. ArchWiki, Unix and Linux. This is the part of the stack exchange and I got the dump of it so I can easily access it. I can open it. It takes a few minutes because my hard drive is warming up. And I can, for example, search through or, or basically click on any topics. And this is as if it's a real website. And these files will be actually updated once in a while. For example, if I hover here, you can see the Mozilla documentation. The latest update was on February, whereas this one also was in March. We have Arch Wiki. This one, the last update was in December. So going back to this website, the other portion is about the content. And this is the most interesting part for us. 
So if we go here on the all categories, we see the list is almost endless and we can go through here, for example, Project Gutenberg, the size of it is 74 gigabytes. It contains a lot of useful free ebooks, mainly the old ebooks. You have iFixit Dump and you can see it's not that big. You have Mark, you have a Stack Exchange, which is the most interesting one for me. It's divided by categories and basically you can host the entire of a stack overflow and the size of it is 81 gigabytes. So you don't need even access to the internet to go through the stack overflow to find answer to your problems or technical issues that you have. We have server faults, ask Ubuntu and so on. We have TED Talks here, the same separated by categories. For example, if somebody is interested to know about design only, they don't need to download other things. And in case that you want to browse it, you can do it. So let's right click here. And this is the online version of the Qx. You can see here, it's look like a real TED website. Basically it's a dump of it. And they have also videos. So you can click on the videos and watch the videos as well. If you want to download anything, just click on the download button. It brings up a pop-up menu. You can download it directly or through torrent, whatever that you prefer. We also have Wikipedia in different languages. All these categories support multiple languages in case that you are interested to download your local language, you can do so. The entire Wikipedia, the full Wikipedia is 100 gigabyte, and you can see it's mentioned Wikipedia English All Maxi. This is the, on the address bar side. The mini version doesn't have all the articles, but uh, still it has a good coverage and uh, many articles there. And if you want to download without no picture, you can download this version in case that you have a shortage of hard drive. I am planning to host couple of things on my Raspberry Pi once I resolve the issue about the storage shortage and you can actually go through see what you wish and you can actually download them and host it. So now let's talk about the hosting it on a Raspberry Pi. We go to the download section we have here Wi-Fi hotspot. So this one can, can turn your Raspberry Pi to a Wi-Fi hotspot or your machine in general. So for the Raspberry Pi, let's say, it's a SD card image, you burn it on your SD card, it downloads a couple of SIM files, and then you're good to go. However, in my case, I didn't want to overwrite the entire Raspberry Pi operating system and the SD card. What I wanted only was to get the HTTP server to be able to serve the SIM file over HTTP. And that is possible using Kiwix Serve. So if we go here to the GitHub page, somewhere in the README, it's stated that this solution serves offline content using Kiwix Serve. So if we go to the Kiwix Serve here, this is the Kiwix tools that contains three main programs. Kiwix Manage, manage the XML based library of SIM files, Kiwix search for full text search in SIM files, Kiwix serve HTTP daemon. So we have two options. We can actually clone this and try to compile it on a machine. Let's say in this case, Raspberry Pi, or we can take a easier route, which would be using the Docker container. I opted for the Docker container. However, if you're very uncomfortable with Docker, that's fine. You can go clone this repository and try to compile it. It should work as well. Let's go to my Raspberry Pi here. If I do Docker PS, we will see that the Kiwix is running on port 8080 on the local host. So literally port 8080 on the machine or on the host machine, in this case Raspberry Pi, is mapped or is binded to port 8080 on the container. And to make the entire process automated when we restart the machine, we shut it down, start it again, etc., we can actually bind the docker run command for this container 
to a systemd service so what we have to do we have to create a systemd service that basically executes docker run command and that is super simple we are going to cover it also but prior to that one i want to cover something else so here i mentioned that the kiwix uh, in my machine runs on https and this is a self-signed certificate it's nothing magical but the reason for it is that some of the sim files are not served on http only for example, if I go to the Mozilla documentation here, since it's HTTPS, it can open it without any issues. So this is the documentation. But this one is the HTTP, right? So if I go to the Mozilla doc, you can see it cannot load, it requires HTTPS. This is the same machine, but this one I'm referring directly to this port without actually uh, routing the traffic through a reverse proxy whereas this one it it routes the traffic or the traffic goes through reverse proxy and as a result of it we have https even though it's self-signed to tackle that we have to actually use something like nginx apache or whatever any web server that has reverse proxy capability i opted for this solution called caddy because it provides https out of the box without no configuration it's lightweight and it's also written in go so all we have is a single executable now we have reached to the second part of the video which we are going to configure kiwix serve running in a docker container on raspberry pi and also installing caddy natively to run on a raspberry pi so provides the https support for the kiwix serve caddy of course has docker image but somewhat i couldn't get it up and running with https served on a local network rather than on the raspberry pi itself so what i did i decided to install caddy on the raspberry pi itself and not use docker for this solution it worked great and it's super simple as well so now let's go through the installation process so as i mentioned we are going to run kiwix in a docker container for that first of all we need to run a docker run command so we do docker run and then we need to specify the name this name you can give it whatever that you you wish but for this particular tutorial we have to give a name it's optional when you do it with the docker run but we are going to give a name because we are going to use this name when we are creating a systemd service to run the kiwix serve when the system starts up so i'm going to call it kiwix dash serve and then we need to specify dash v parameter which is going to point to where our sim files are located in the raspberry pi so in my case would be a slash media a slash smb and then i have a 500 gigabyte a storage attached to it and the files are in a directory called internet offline so if i press tab we should be able to see all the sim files here so this is the sim files here so we need to bind this one to a slash data on the container so basically what we are saying we're saying that inside of the docker container if we do cd slash data you should be able to access to this directory on the host machine right so we want to make the sim files available inside of the docker container simply speaking and then we are going to specify the ports that we want to be able to access to the kiwix serve in this case we are saying bind the port 8080 on the host machine to the port 8080 of the docker container the left side is the host machine the right side is the docker container 
the right side you should not change it because qx by default serves the traffic on port 8080 the, the left side you can actually change it however for, for example if your port 8080 on the host machine is already occupied you can just do whatever that you wish one two three four it doesn't matter but the right side you should not change it at all the next step is to specify the image you can go to the docker hub and search for qx and then you can copy that address or the image name so in our case would be qx slash qx dash surf and then we can we have to specify the sim files which sim files we want to be served we can just simply pass z uh, star.sim for practicality reason and then press enter it is going to fail because already i have that container and also the container is already running but if you do it for the first time you should see that the qx starts up and then you see the logs after that just press ctrl c to stop the container in case that you made the con you made a configuration mistake if you do docker run again it will not work it will fail with the same error that you can see on my screen to tackle that what you can do you can say docker container rm and then pass qx serve to delete it and then run the correct configuration again in order to be sure that the container is created you can just do docker container ls a and then you should see something like this qx serve and the qx serve should be the name of the container this container name we have to remember it because we are going now to create a systemd service to start this container automatically when the computer is started to create the systemd service we are going to its directory systemd slash system if this path doesn't exist just create one and then here if i do ls i have a lot of systemd services here for example i have jellyfin i have samba etc so what we have to do we have to create a service here let's say docker dash qx dash serve dot service i already have it and the syntax should be like this i copied this syntax from the internet but i can quickly go through each of section so we have a unit section is a pretty standard we describe what this uh, let's say service is about or the unit is about it requires docker service to be up and running so we want this service to be run after docker started so for this one we have docker service so it should be after docker started run this let's say service restart always is a standard here the most important parts are these two lines exec start so the start hook would be docker start dash a then the name of the container so you have to whatever the name that you pass during docker run command you need to copy that and paste it here and for the stop is a docker stop dash t2 qx serve and this part is entirely a standard thing there's nothing magical there once you have this one and you created it you need to reload the systemd daemon so for that one sudo systemctl daemon reload you reload it after that you need to enable that service so enable docker qx serve dot service this one doesn't enable or doesn't start qx immediately to start the qx immediately after you done the enable just type a start it starts qx immediately and to see what is going on with the qx you can just do a status pass the password and then you can see that qx is up and running if there is any issue it shows here and then you can see the logs as well now the good thing about having qx running 
in a docker as a system d service is that if i do docker ps and if i stop this container it will start automatically after a few seconds so mind you here we have a status two hours and if i do docker ps you can see it's just already started one second i wasn't fast enough if i did a docker ps faster you would have seen for a fraction of second there is no container here and it was entirely empty now let's move to the part about setting up carry so for the carry what we have to do we have to go to the download section here and then choose the architecture in my case would be linux arm 7 if you are using raspberry pi with the raspberry and operating system you can choose this one if you are using any 64-bit operating system you have to go with the arm 64 i'm going to copy the link here go to my raspberry pi I am going to the TMP directory. We are going to do wget and then we would like to rename the file. So the file name would be carry here. So once the file is downloaded, we are going to give the executable permission to it and then move it to a slash user a slash bin. So here we have carry. The file size also is pretty small. I think it should be around 30 megabytes. 36 megabytes and now let's actually give executable exis a permission to it so if we do carry here it lists all the available commands what we want to use is reverse proxy here to run caddy as a reverse proxy what we have to do we have to say caddy reverse proxy and then dash dash from we need now to add the ip address of the raspberry pi or the machine that you are running caddy on in my case would be 192.168.046 and then we want this one to serve https so 443 would be https and then dash dash two where to map 8080 so it binds port 443 or https to the 8080 so all this traffic here will basically route it to the 8080 but this one will be served on https of course we need to do sudo if i do it will fail because this port is already in use as you can see address already in use if you do it you should be able to access kiwix serve on https now what we are going to do we are going to copy this one to a slash bin to a slash user bin not bin so you can just do sudo copy caddy to a slash user a slash bin the reason for it is that if we restart the machine the temp will be gone and we don't want to lose the caddy there so the next step which is going to be the last step of this video would be to create a caddy systemd service to start automatically when we restart or start the machine so again we are going to let's see systemd system and then we are going to create a file called caddy.service as you can see the structure is the same as the previous one however the content differs slightly this one i find it on the caddy uh, github itself so this one is a sample of the caddy service i copied the entire of this thing and i just changed two lines the start one and the reload one i didn't need it so i deleted it and the start one i passed the same command that i showed you a few minutes ago so all you have to do copy that content paste it and then you can delete or you can keep the reload part depends on your needs because i don't have a carry file i remove the reload part and then for the start all i have is caddy reverse proxy the same syntax that i covered it a few minutes ago dash dash from the ip address of the raspberry pi 443 and this one once you have done that 
reload the system d start the caddy and enable it you should be good to go so to enable it just quickly for the sake of this tutorial systemctl enable caddy.service this one enables it then you can just do a start to start it and once you started it you can do a status so to see what's going on with the caddy that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it i would like to take a moment to thank patreon contributors grog with 30 generous dollar stellar orbit with 20 generous dollar openbsd maximalist alexander m hogarth axcock monty russell willis and seneca openbsd enthusiast dm liquid mobius and finally openbsd curious ryan woodford and sicton